Hello, how are you? Um, so, a couple of things I wanted to tell you guys. What I've done with the chapters is that the first 10 chapters has a lot of science, so we'll catch up with that once I get back. Um, but the bottom five chapters have absolutely no science. Um, it, it's kind of rehashing a lot of things that we talked about in chapter four and five. I mean, sorry, three and four. Um, so we're going to do chapter 21 right now, which is a lot about solid toxic waste, a lot to do with trash, um, with trash, waste management, uh, agricultural runoff, livestock runoff, industrial waste, all that wonderful stuff. Um, as usual, there is the outline. And now this is a chapter where you will have to learn a couple of federal legislations. Um, as we go along, there's a bunch of them that come up. I'm actually, uh, I will actually email you guys a list of all the laws you need to know. There's about 25 of them. Um, you kind of need to know when they were signed, what was their basic purpose and how effective they are. Um, now the part of how effective they are and like case studies and stuff like that, we'll discuss about it in class much closer to the test. Um, right now, let's just dive in so we produce about 11 billion tons of solid waste every year this um this is not taking into consideration anything that has to do with air pollutants this is the, the word solid is kind of loosely used um it's also to do with like contamination of waterways and stuff like that a large portion of it is actually um agricultural waste about half of it um we've talked in the past about you uh, um about eutrophication which is directly the result of runoff most of our fertilizers are uh based in nitrogen and phosphorus remember we talked about nkp um so the base in nitrogen and phosphorus gets into the water system it, it, it's mostly a surface runoff um gets into the water system and then you have you know, life form, an increase in BOD, um, the lake gets covered in like algae and hyacinth and that kind of stuff and life forms underneath die out. Um, you also have under agricultural waste, you also have a surface uh, sediment runoff when you have a huge storm or large rains and nothing has been, has been planted on that. You have soil that runs off that again deposits itself into the nearest water body that's there, increasing the bottom of the lake. So if you have a lake every year, the lake's bottom keeps rising. That's not a good situation either. Um, you also have a lot of runoff in terms of um, manure, um, which is organic, but you know it's not meant to be in your river. Um, it is fecal material, um, which ha contains a lot of bacteria, which is not supposed to contaminate your food source or your drinking water source. Besides all of these things, you also have whatever the crop residue is, which also is a waste product, again, causing waste. It doesn't mean that it's not disposed off of correctly. Most, most of the times, the crop residue is disposed off correctly, but still, it is waste. Um, besides all of these things, you also have the animal farms. Animal farm contamination is actually slightly more dangerous than agricultural um regular crop growing um waste because when you have animal farms you usually have a lot of manure poop um and poop usually has a lot of e coli and other fecal coliforms which can contaminate which have contaminated the water water supply now one of the most important things to remember here is that once you have this contamination reach the groundwater or the aquifer, there is absolutely no way of cleaning this water out. So then, so the water, the contamination stays. If you take a place like California, um, we have Altadena Farms uh, close by um, that actually has, I don't know how many head of cattle. Uh, we also have a problem with our aquifers constantly reducing because we have no rain. Um, once the if our aquifer is actually contaminated and we have no rain, 
there is no way of cleaning that aquifer out. That aquifer, the water from that aquifer is pretty much useless. Um, besides all of these things, there's also a huge problem with the amount of antibiotics that's used in the animal farms uh, and vitamin supplements. Um, interestingly, the way they found out that uh, vitamin B supplements is very good for um, animal growth is because the waterways were actually contaminated with vitamin B and it actually increased the size of the fish living there. And that's how they found out that, you know, hey, we should give it to chicken, make bigger breasts and thighs. Um, so neither having um interesting side note about 80% of all of amoxicillin that's produced in the United States today is used in by, in the, by uh, livestock farmers, um, which means some of it is in your water. A um, couple of words that you kind of, is a new word out here is a fecal coliform. A coliform, fecal coliforms is just bacterial colonies that are found only in fecal material. There is an acceptable level of fecal coliforms in your drinking water. Um, I think, I may be wrong, but I think it's 0.35 parts or 3.5 parts, something like that, uh, to a billion, uh, to a million, sorry. Um, that is an acceptable amount. This is why they tell you don't drink water when you go to Mexico because they have a ton of fecal coliforms because don't have a proper way of um, cleaning up the water. Um, the University of North Carolina actually did a study about how much manure is in their state that has not actually been processed, that has not been um, cleaned up. Um, and, and, and people have not even gotten to it. And the term they used for it is called the mountains of manure. Uh, now, certain parts that have a lot of livestock also have something called, um, that's what it's called, uh, shit geysers. Um, basically, when you have piles of manure anywhere, there's a lot of gases that form within it. Um, methane and ammonia are just a few of them. And once there's a huge buildup of gases, um, solid body, a lot of gases, pushes through, pressure, if anybody remembers chemistry, pressure. Um, and that basically it shoots up like a geyser, which is also just not a good thing. Um, the second type of waste we have is also mining related. When mining related waste are more chemical in nature, you're going to see phosphoric acid, fluorine, a lot of sulfur based, um, uh, uh, chemicals, SOX, SOCs, uh, and nitrogen-based, uh, which are NOCs, NOx and SOX. Those will come up a couple of times in the, uh, in the chapter. Uh, most of this comes from slag. So when you are doing some kind of mining, um, there's usually a washing process that happens, and uh, most of the contaminants rise to the top. Um, it's like when you're making soup and stuff like that, you get when you're boiling something, you get that scum on top. That scum is usually removed and thrown out. Now, most companies do actually process this thing. Again, this this, this is a, an overview of all the trash created. This does not mean that it's their contamination, except for agriculture. Um, while small farms are all fine and dandy, they are also really big polluters because they don't have the resources to clean up all their waste. Industrial waste, industrial waste is from any kind of industry. One of the biggest um, culprits there are actually technology industries, um, not software, I'm talking about hardware. Um, they do use a lot of uh, toxic um, chemicals in there that could potentially have a runoff. Municipal waste is basically you and I, the amount of waste we pr produce. Uh, um, waste stream is everything we throw away, which, which we increasingly throw away a lot of things. Um, if you if you just stop and think about your just through the day how much paper trash and how much just basic trash you have created paper food uh, plastic all that wonderful stuff you've created uh, give you a perspective of how much waste each one of us generates winning knowingly unknowingly uh, so this is kind of a breakup of what we actually what our waste domestic waste stream looks like if you look at it a lot if you look at the first pie chart you'll see that a lot of it can actually be recycled unfortunately only 26 percent is 
Um, and we are going to talk a lot about what is um, that it's 26% plus 8%, obviously. Uh, so about 34% is actually recycled and composted. So they're being reused. Uh, anything incinerated is obviously not being reused. Uh, landfill is the waiting game. Uh, we are hoping one day we'll strike gold out of it or something. Um, now, a couple of uh, various types of dump situations we have, um, methods we have is an open dump. Um, open dumps are just these large areas that you see where um, your trash is taken from what, once you throw it in a bin. It's a, a dude comes in a van or a truck or whatever, takes it, takes it to a, um, a uh, a sorting station some of it is sorted out whatever can be recycled is recycled whatever cannot be recycled is then shipped to a different place and that different place is just a large area where they dump all their trash this is unfortunately the most used method in most developing countries even in the United States it is actually one of the most used methods this is a very good example for uh, environmental racism uh, just because you are not going to, under any circumstance, see an open dump in uh, Stanford. And you're not going to see one in Norwalk. You're not going to see one in Milford. You're not going to see one in Greenwich. There is a dump in one place, and that place's name is Bridgeport. I seem like I really don't like Bridgeport. I have nothing against them, personally. Um, and, the this second part of it is very ironic um that again going back to the let me uh, just backtrack a little uh contamination of the groundwater when you have dump sitting in a certain place that the ground is not impermeable stuff seeps into the ground especially chemicals that can leach and all this trash tends to react with each other there is a lot of chemicals that are um gases very noxious gases that are formed there's those are my dogs, um, uh, farmed, um, and they tend to seep into the ground. And once again, if it gets into the contamination of the aquifer, contamination of the groundwater is really not a good thing because it cannot be cleaned out. Um, now, this part of it, the second part of it is actually very interesting considering how much more oil is thrown down sewers and again they soak up into the ground and contaminate the groundwater considering most auto stores will take used motor oil and dispose of it for us now one of the reasons we don't do this is because we are lazy uh and then i mean most of us take our cars you know to get the oil changed to a place um i don't know what they do at that place I mean, I found this part really interesting that it's five times the volume of the Valdez um, oil spill. Um, and we cry about Valdez. Now, I think Alex can give you a better idea of this because she actually got to see this firsthand. Uh, the amount of trash that is dumped in the ocean um, wittingly, unwittingly. And at one point of time, we did think that it was a, a good idea to just dump it in the ocean. That was our solution a couple of years, a couple of decades back. Um, unfortunately, now we know it's not a good idea. I think there's a very nice, uh, very good documentary about this that you can watch. I think it's on Vice Network. Um, but I, if I find it, I'll send you the link for it now, there's so much particulate plastic in our waters that it's actually difficult that it's actually replaced life forms remember the ocean actually has more life per square inch than than land uh, some of that life form has actually been replaced by particulate plastic um, let me see if I can write that word down here okay Okay. Hey. 